Today on Locked On Red Wings, William Wallander, Carter Mazur, and possibly Marco Casper are headed to Grand Rapids. Could we see them in Detroit, though, before the season is over? You're Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. I am a podcast producer for the Daily J, a WWJ news radio podcast. Well, Scotty's a host over at Lockdown Tigers as well as a freelance journalist for the Detroit News. And today we got a kind of a mixed bag for you guys. A lot of news and notes uh, coupled with questions on some major prospects. Then we'll finish it off with a game preview against oh, the Carolina Hurricanes. God help us. Scotty. How's your day doing? going, buddy? It's all right, man. It's been a really busy one uh, as opening day is tomorrow for the Detroit Tigers. So, um, a lot of trade. Uh, yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of prepping and and getting last second roster moves and all sorts of stuff in preparation for uh, for as the listeners are listening to this today. So, well, that's awesome. I'm, I'm sure you're excited to finally have baseball season back Very as much hockey so. season begins to wind down and Scotty as consequence of hockey season winding down, you see guys begin to get signed to their ELCs and you see guys get sent all over the place, depending on where they were prior. And that was the case for the Red Wings as William Wallander and Carter Mazur as mentioned on the episode yesterday. And as people are well aware by now, as most of these signings happened over the weekend, uh, signed their entry-level contracts. So now they are, are like officially, officially a part of the Red Wings organization as depth players. And um, they continue to make their journey to hopefully the NHL that seems pretty likely at this point that both of those guys are NHL bound. The question is when. And then there's also, and we talked about this yesterday, as we're going to expand on that conversation today, Marco Casper unofficially officially coming over to North America as well as Rogla's website says, thank you, Marco. And it, it's <laughs> like, have fun with the rest of the season in Grand Rapids or whatever. Like it, it seemed to have indicated that he's coming over now, which is contrary to based on what he had said, where he was like, I'm going to stay and focus on school before world championships. But, you know, I can't imagine Rogla would get it wrong that he's going over. And if they did get it wrong, then not go and correct it immediately. <laughs> so obviously we say it's still unofficially official because the Red Wings haven't said anything about him coming over to North America. But if that's true, the Detroit Red Wings now have William Wall under their second round pick from 2019, I believe. Carter Mazur, their second round pick from 2020. And Marco Casper, their first round pick from 2022 coming over to North America or going to the AHL Carter Mazur was already in North America. He's playing college, but going to grand Rapids to start their professional hockey journeys here stateside. And I mean, I guess the initial question, Scotty is, is how big of an impact does that make in grand Rapids immediately? I mean, a, a fun one, if nothing else, right? Like, I mean, I mean, with the the season hockey season kind of winding down, you know, I'm I'm not really sure it's gonna change the the like course of the season or anything too dramatically, just because it's almost April. But I mean, it it certainly makes it a lot more exciting immediately. And they've already had some uh, some like the Grand Rapids Griffins are already posting like videos of uh, of Mazer, right? Yeah, it was Mazer like skating around. Yeah, you're right. And a lot easier just... for him to get to the uh, Grand Rapids than the two guys overseas. <laughs> right. Yeah, and he's still that's kind of a hike still for him. Um, but yeah, definitely a uh, a cool little thing there, and and something that again, you know, whether it's going to result in the Griffin season altering in, in almost in April, it, it at least is going to make it a lot more fun immediately. Well, and that's the big thing is, the, is they're already their last place in their division, central division, 64 games played, 27 wins, 30 losses uh, for a point total of 61 points. There's a couple, you know, overtime losses in there as well. 
the, it, I don't expect them to make a huge impact immediately this year, you know, as in like going to change the trajectory of from not being in the playoffs to being in the playoffs. That right. kind of I don't think that's going to happen, but I do think they slot in and immediately make that team so much better. I think yeah. William Wallander, I would expect Wallander to probably have a more immediate impact than Carter Mazur. Carter Mazur is coming from collegiate hockey where he was really good. I mean, this season with, University of Denver, he had 37 points in 40 games played. He was nearly a point a game. That's really good. He was one of the best players in college hockey. Um, but William Wallander is playing SHL hockey. He's playing professional hockey in one of the best professional leagues, and he was one of the, the best defensemen on that team. And he had 26 points in 50 games played this season as he continues to grow and get better. And, I mean, the... They didn't, Grand Rapids Griffins don't necessarily have a problem scoring goals. It's mostly, their issue has been mostly defensively and in a net. So having him come along and immediately solidify and fill in a hole, honestly, that Simon Edmondson left is Edmondson is probably going to finish his season with the NHL club. It's going to be, it's going to be huge. The big question is, Scotty, is if Mark is Marco Casper actually coming over because Elite Prospects has not yet updated his page to having said he's in the Grand Rapids organization. It has for William Wallander. So that's still the big question mark is, is he actually coming overseas? But Marco Casper is the seventh best player in all of the SHL in goals above replacement list last year. He doesn't show up on the stat sheet as much as, you know, top tier prospects would think, but his, his, where he is super good is away from the puck. He's a, he's a much more skilled playmaker. He had eight goals, 15 assists, 23 points in 52 games played. He's a two way forward. He, he's supposed to be like, you know, we signed Andrew cop to be that defensive minded second line center. who's just supposed to fill it out. Marco Casper is supposed to have a ceiling higher than cop, but a similar ish players playing style. I mean, so he, with how good he was in the SHL, if he is going to the ground Rapids Griffins could immediately make that team so much better. Absolutely. And, and, you know, having that one call away next season is going to be pretty enjoyable, I think. You know what I mean? Like having having that in the back pocket, all of these guys, you know, right in the back pocket where if something happens or if there's an injury or if they, you know, are, are just going to go like all in type of thing, having that one call away and, and you know, a nice little hour, <laughs> hour and 15 minute, hour and a half drive away is not bad. So um, it's, it's, it's awesome. And you're right. He's definitely the two-way forward type. He's not going to be a stat sheet stuffer, but he is certainly going to be like that sound type of – he's the type of player that raises the floor of an organization, yes, right? Like he's, he's a, a sound, really, really solid uh, player that, that's going to be really good on both sides of the ice, both ends of the ice. And uh, that's something that Iserman has really wanted the entire time yet since taking over. Um, and Lord knows we're going to take all the help we can get defensively, even if it's VO forward. So uh, I, I am really, really excited for Marco Casper. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm pumped as well. He's the type of guy who makes his teammates around him better. I mean, if you ever see ice hockey gifts, share video of what Marco Casper is doing his highlights, it's always, him making his teammates look good. It's always playmaking, it seems like. And he has underrated mitts, too. And that side of his game could obviously develop. But, I mean, I've seen conversation, and I don't even think it's wrong, that Marco Casper could make the NHL roster as early as next year. Yeah. Like Lucas Raymond-esque type speed in the way his game has developed this season. He's taken a huge step forward this year overall in his style of game. He's doubled his point totals from last season. Not that that, again, not that that necessarily matters in every case, because not every guy you draft is meant to be your 50 goal scorer, <laughs> but he's grown his game already offensively. Steve Eisenman said it when they drafted him, that it's an underrated part of his game. So I'm really excited if he is indeed coming over to the United States to finish up the season. I mean, obviously you're going to keep an eye on Carter Mazur as he continues to develop. And hopefully he's like maybe just one full year in Grand Rapids away from an NHL debut. William Wallander, maybe fights for a spot in training camp, but Marco Casper, all three of these guys down in Grand Rapids for the rest of this year, again, assuming Casper is going, that's all of a sudden Grand Rapids Griffiths become last place in their vision becomes must watch hockey out of nowhere because you have a first and two second round picks that all converge at the same time. Correct. Yeah. hundred percent. It's going to be super exciting. Um, 
We're going to take a pr- quick break. I almost said quick break. Um, when we come back, Scotty, we're going to continue this conversation and pivot towards how these players might be able to affect the Detroit Red Wings this season, if that's a possibility. So stay tuned. But before we get to that, I got to talk to you guys about Built Bar. Looking for a delicious treat, but you don't want all the fat and calories, and you got to try Built Bars. What makes Built Bars so good? Well, for starters, they are covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in unbelievable flavors like churro. And Scotty, I had a churro before hopping on today, and I should have waited so I could eat very loudly into the mic. Um, <laughs> but I got home from – this is literally how it works. So Built Bars, obviously, they're a protein bar, right? You know this. Everyone knows this. They've heard this podcast. But they're also a really healthy thing to have just as a snack. I came directly home from work today. Normally, I go to the gym first, but I have other things going on in the evening. So I came straight home to record with you. I was still starving. And you know what? I was like, I want to make have a tasty snack that is going to be good for me. So I grabbed another churro built bar out of my 13-bar box. Yeah. And it was, again, it just... it. It's it slaps. I had the I've been having the brownie batter one too. The other one that comes in that thirteen bar box also very good. And I found this out. I always did. I never said it, but I thought it was weird that they were thirteen bar boxes. Like odd number. Who does odd numbers? So bizarre. Well, I found out because it's a twelve bar box with one additional flavor. There's one bar, one extra bar that's a different flavor. And it was double chocolate. I haven't tried that one. I'm waiting for a special occasion to try that one. <laughs> But it's it's such a clever marketing idea, too, because you get these two flavors that you want, and then we're going to throw in an extra one so you can find out if you like this as well. It gives you like a trial run in a flavor you don't know about. And I love that. And it's, it's a Built Puff, so I'm sure it's going to taste absolutely fantastic. Banger. The regular Built Bars are so good, Scotty, but Built Puffs, like X, another level. It's just another level. I mean, chocolate-covered marshmallow – Plus, whatever flavor it is, is it could just and be a good for you. marshmallow. Wait, is there an original flavored built bar? That's what I need to know right now. <laughs> is there just a built puff that's just a chocolate covered marshmallow? Is that a thing? Probably. I gotta, I'm gonna have to do some research on this because everything's flavored and they all taste great. Well, you can also, it's still March. You can still do the builtmarchmadness.com oh, that's thing. That's right. Too. Yeah, you're completely right. See a lot of the flavors there, I'm sure. And again, it tastes so good. That's only 130 calories, four grams of sugar, and whopping 17 grams of protein. Why I made it my healthy snack of choice when I got home from work today. Uh, at Walmart, you get a four-bar box that's going to come with cookies and cream and double chocolate. That's that extra bar that came with my 13-bar uh, or coconut puffs. Or you can go to Sam's Club and get the 13-bar box with hit flavors, brownie batter, and churro. You'll thank us later. And of always, as of course, as always, you can go to Built.com. That's always a viable option. So make sure you guys grab some Built Bars. Segment two, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. All right, Scotty, we're talking about Marco Casper, William Wallander, and Carter Mazur. Quick aside, somebody pointed out on Twitter that Ken Daniels was going to have to practice calling him Volander. And I'm really curious if that's actually his pronunciation or if that person was just trolling because we've had so much back and forth on Jonathan Berggren's name. And like everyone in the locker room was calling him Jonathan and he just didn't care. And then they came back and he was joking that he was Yanni Burgers now. And so I, and I, st- I still don't know. And I'm too too afraid to ask <laughs> at this point. So he is whatever I call him. Uh, so I'm, re- I'm really curious if it's going to be like William Volander or something like that. Uh, crazy. But v- if it's William Volander, Volander, I will eat three built bars on air over the course of an episode. Wouldn't that be crazy, though? I'd love that. Uh, but again, that's an aside. Back to the main point here. With as banged up as the Red Wings are, and they're getting two guys back in the lineup for this game against the Carolina Hurricanes, and we'll talk about that in segment three. But with as banged up as the Red Wings are, offensively, the defensive depth isn't that great. Do we see any of these guys at the NHL level as soon as even this year? And we've seen it before. I mean, think, remember the year that Taro Hirose and Ryan Kuffner got signed? They immediately oh, made the joke. Or the joke. The joke. I remember the, the year they signed Tara Horozzi. Oh, yeah. Don't Taco <laughs> you Tuesday, best believe that. And same thing with Danny DeKaiser. Right? Danny DeKaiser was a highly touted college prospect. And he made the jump yeah. immediately. Late bloomer out of what? Western? Crazy. I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. you don't see a lot of Broncos making that kind of leap. That was amazing. But do you think that Carter Mazur or William Wallander, who already has that professional experience, could make that leap immediately? 
and help that team with as few games as they have left. Their their ELCs, they're they're they could do the entry level slide. Or actually, you know what? Mm. I don't think they could. That this throws a wrench in it before you even can get to your 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 side of the story. But I don't think Wallander or Mazer are eligible for the entry level slide because I think they have to be either 18 or 19 in order to get that slide. I think you're right. Yeah. But regardless, I mean, they're so banged up. Could you see it happening this year? Well, I, I mean, I kind of, even beforehand, like I, I always kind of assumed that Casper was the one that if they were going to put someone on the NHL roster for seven games, I always kind of assumed it was going to be Casper just because A, Played in a professional league, like whether, you know, we can argue about which league's better and what not to her blue in the face, but like he did play in a professional league. And then uh, besides that, just the, I, I don't know, like I, maybe it's, maybe I don't even have like a specific reason. Maybe it's just like a weird feeling, but like I, I, for whatever reason, when I think of, players that that could do that i mean casper is really the only one kind of maybe because it's like first round pick you want to give him a, a a taste or maybe it's because he's actually closer to making the nhl roster next year than those other two um so that would put him in a position where you're like oh like let's take a look give him a cup of coffee right now and see what happens uh in the fall then after that like i i the only one that I that I really see it happening with is Casper. Yeah, and I think the realization, I think I always just assume every guy who signs an ELC is like 18 or 19, but Wallander was drafted uh, in 2020, and Carter Mazur was drafted in 2021. Yeah, Mazur. Mazur's 21, college. playing collegiate hockey. He, he played an extra year there, so it took him an extra year to get his ELC. Wallander has been playing the SHL, so... The entry level slide, which is if you don't play that, what's what's going on at Edmondson right now is if he plays less than ten games, his right. entry level contract doesn't begin yet because he's only nineteen. But Mazer and Wollander are all, both twenty or older, so if they play even one game in the NHL level, their their right. entry level contract yeah, begins right away. Yeah. So, in fact, actually, as I'm talking about this, I'm realizing more. Wallander and Mazur's contracts don't even begin until next season. They're both in Grand Rapids on an amateur tryout for the rest of the year. So they'd have oh. to sign them to, I don't even know if you can do that. I'm learning. I'm, I'm going to have to do some research. Interesting. The only one who could do that is Marco Casper. If he comes over, cause he's already signed to his ELC right, and he's yeah, 18 he's years ELC. old. Well, who was the list of players they ELC the other day? Well, not the other, not all in one day, but over the last couple of weeks, they've been ELCing a lot of players. It was Wallander, Mazer, and then I actually have, let me, there was a new guy from. There was someone else. Yeah, hold on. I got his name for you right here. He's been really killing it down there with, where's your name, you guy? Alexander Dosette. Oh, He's yeah. Juniors. And his ELC begins next yeah. year. So, yeah, right. I mean, they're not even on NHL contracts yet. It doesn't start till next season. So, Mazer and Wallander are going to have to stay in the AHL. Man, that stinks. I was really hoping, and but then that realization just kicked in. Well, um, I mean, still, like the conversation is still very prevalent with with Casper, and I if think he comes that, over, right? <laughs> right. Well, yeah, I guess <laughs> that's gonna be the that's gonna be the whole crux of the conversation. <laughs> yeah, is- what if, like, yeah, what if the the wings just like they're like, yeah, we have no clue what they're talking about. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know why they tweeted that. That makes zero sense. We didn't say anything, right? No, that and that's that's the crazy thing is. Or if like it just mysteriously gets deleted off Rogel's website and they don't address it. All right. So it's no one even realizes. Up. But yeah, so I asked a question at the beginning of the segment and I'm finding out that the answer to at least two thirds of those is no, because their ELCs don't even begin yet and they're on tryouts with Well the look, it took us Griffins. one segment to come to the our own conclusion of the question. So And you, you know what? Because I consider this, I treat this as live radio. It's not getting edited out, so everyone gets to hear us talk. But you know what? This is probably educational for a lot of other people as well, right? Yeah. I mean, there will definitely be a lot of people that are like, you're stupid. How could you ever think that? Which, like, is I fine. I hope people post but, that. Right. Yeah. But, yes, I would imagine that 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 the th- explaining everything around ELCs and everything is is 
a little educational as maybe well. Maybe maybe I'll uh, post a comment, pin a comment on the YouTube channel, and be like, "Was this segment useless, or did you learn something new with us?" And then we'll. we'll I'm going to comment if- from my personal Twitter, so it says, or my personal YouTube, so it just says my name, and be like, "You guys are so dumb." Yeah, and then maybe I can watch a really cool YouTube montage uh, from the golden years of the Tigers on there. You could. I don't know if it's on that one. Ah, uh, okay. I have like eight couple. different youtubes from when i was younger <laughs> <laughs> all right scotty well with that being said let's hope that marco casper comes over and we see him at the nhl i yes. think we see him at the nhl next year regardless if i'm being honest um and that's not me even being optimistic i think no I, I i agree with you i think that's genuine i, I believe i'm not you know i'm not saying it's a guarantee or anything i'm not planting a flag about it but i i do think that it's a lot more of a conversation than than maybe some people realize in March of 2023. All right. We'll go to another quick break. And when we come back, Scotty, we will talk about the game against the Carolina Hurricanes. And there's a lot of news and notes in regards to this game that are going to have major ripple effects on that lineup. But first, I got to talk to you guys today about FanDuel. The tournament is heating up, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now, FanDuel is giving new customers a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash lockdown and sign up today to claim your no-sweat first bet. Then you can wager on everything from the money line to point spreads to which team will be cutting down the net. All you have... Excuse me, all on the app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So don't m- miss your shot at a new, a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Segment three, Locked On Red Wings podcast. All right, Scotty. After a first talking about this exciting Grand Rapids arrivals in a segment talking about educating people on entry-level slides which is the entire point right we, we were yeah going, yeah it was actually it was always them. supposed to be educational for <laughs> everyone else not us yeah um now we're going to talk about the game preview against the carolina hurricanes they are the best team in the league at Corsi four percentage and expected goals four percentage at even strength they are the best even strength hockey team in the league better than the boston bruins which is insane because the Boston Bruins are on pace for like 135 points. The Carolina Hurricanes are a scary hockey team. In fact, if I remember, I had them have them going to the cup final against Colorado when we did our beginning of the year predictions. Um, But here we are about to play the Carolina Hurricanes again. And a lot has come out today in regards to what's going to happen in this game. Taro Hirose was sent down. Uh, Alex Nedeljkovic was confirmed to start against his former hockey team. And Simon Edvinson and Ben Sherratt are going to be back in the lineup. So that's a lot of things happening all at once. What, what do you think is the most impactful, let's phrase it that way, on this team's, um, on this team's roster for this game? Um... I I mean like Edvinson's the most fun. I'll I'll certainly. I mean that that's one's fairly obvious. I'm I'm pumped to watch him again. I Carolina they're ridiculous because like they they have a pretty middle of the road offense as far as just like their goals scored totals and you know, like how many goals they're putting up a night. It's it's pretty like middle of the pack ish. It is. Yeah. The issue is that they don't allow sh- like high danger shots. They, it's- they don't allow shots really um, like period. They, they, they just don't allow shots on net. They have an unbelievable defensive system. Their goaltenders' numbers aren't even like that great. Like they're not, they're they're not. They, they don't have like a, a pair of Vesna winners. Like they just have a ridiculous defensive se- season system. That not only is their defensemen at the blue line, but their forwards play swarming aggressive forecheck defense, and. You just don't get to shoot the puck ever. 
And yes. so, like, good luck. They are going to be – they are what the Islanders want to be. Yeah. We talk about how good the Islanders' defense is and how good they play defensively, but the Carolina Hurricanes are them on steroids. The only difference is they don't have a Vesna caliber goalie like the Islanders do. Right. So, just to give you context, the Islanders – are not the Islanders. The Hurricanes, like I said, are – the top team at Corsi 4% which is sh- shot attempts and the top team at expected goals 4% which is the quality of the shot attempts at f- even strength at five on five. They lead the league in shot attempts four and they lead the league in the least amount of shot attempts against. <laughs> but despite all that, to your credit, they're 18th in the league at goals scored at even strength. They're not, they are technically a hair below middle of the pack at goals scored. They win their hockey games. Goalie but... save percentage, like on the season, their team goalie save percentage is like around exactly 16th. Like again, yeah. like they, 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 it's literally just they don't allow shots. They, like they play they, an they, insane. They don't allow opportunities. They play an insane defensive system that puts a heavy focus on um, shutting down and suppressing shot attempts and possessing the puck. And and the craziest anti-zone entry you'll see. It's it's insane. It's unbelievable. And to your point about the goaltending, and we've, we've had this discussion before, the Carolina Hurricanes make their goalies look really good. Yeah. Uh, we saw it with Peter Morazic. He had a career year with them. We saw it with uh, Jack Campbell, career year with them. We saw it with Nedeljkovic. Came up with a Calder final. <laughs> I was like, we have one, actually. Well, I was going, I was going a lot of people point to and say, like, you know, which side is, which team is the real Ned? Yeah. You see it with Frederick Anderson. He wasn't this good before he went to Carolina. Yeah. And if you look, literally look at the three goalies that they've had, this is how each goalie has been pretty much shared a third of the season. Yeah. Frederick Anderson, 29 games played. Pyotr Kachetkov, Kachetkov, Kachetkov. Pyotr Kachekov, they could just call him yep. Kuchi, uh, 24 games played. And Anti Ranta, tw- they do call him Kuchi. I'm not, they, uh, 23 games played for Anti Ranta. Save percentage Anti-Ranta. going in that order 904, 909, 907. Nothing like Vesna caliber, like you were saying, but they all receive such a significant bump by playing behind the Carolina Hurricanes that it's scary. And yeah. absolutely, I mean, man. It's, uh, you know, we, we talk about the wings inability to have like really clean zone entries consistently and the inability to really possess the puck sometimes like this is going to be a tall task. Yeah, without without a doubt. And at least I mean, if you want to talk about silver lining. So like I said, Evans is going to be back in the lineup. He's going to be fun. I think he's going to be good. He's been good in pretty much every single game. The last mm-hmm. two of the three he's played, he's been phenomenal. I think Ben Chirot coming back is actually a boon. Like, I think that is a huge Well, yeah, when you get. look at the what the third pairing's been for the last week. Ole has been really poor since signing his extension. The second half of the season, he's not been great. Um, Osterle, Haig, and Lindstrom, I don't, not, I'm not going to disparage them. You guys know who they are. You know what kind of player they are. Ben Chirot is going to be an upgrade, having him in the lineup. Edmondson is going to be an upgrade coming in the lineup. Um... What's interesting is they sent down Taro Hirose to make room for Sherratt coming back, but it doesn't matter. It, it, it's that that type of that move doesn't really make a whole lot of a whole lot of waves, so to speak. Sure. Uh, but in other news as well, Vili Husso skated today for the first time, yeah. and Lalone backtracked on him being maybe done for the season and said possibly just. Like he could come back before the end of the year with about 10 games left, which is good news. And Robbie Fabry is doubly now confirmed (laughs) done for the season. They they said it like two weeks ago. And now they're like, just in case you forgot, he's really done for the year. Yeah. Now they said he had a surgery to clean it up, clean the knee up and he's out for six weeks. weeks. Mm -hmm. So, so he he'll be ready to go by the time the season starts. Although there's a conversation to be had about, how much longer it's worth it for a man like that. Not that I'm trying to campaign for him to hang him up, but the knee injuries aren't, aren't going away and they're only going to compound as time goes on. I I just want what's health, what's best for his health, you know? Uh, But any, as long as he's continuing to play, I'm going to root for him to have recover and come back and be impactful for the Detroit Red Wings. But yeah, Nedeljkovic is getting the start in net and Ned's proven that he plays really good against the Carolina Hurricanes. Yes, he does. He very much does. He, uh, 
I mean, we talked about it yesterday a little bit, right? He's had a couple of revenge games. Yes, he has. He's been he's been good against the Carolina Hurricanes in the past, and I think he comes out with a little bit of edge again as he feels like maybe they threw him away. And I, I hope he does because this is a man who's fighting for a, an NHL contract. Whether or not it's with us is remains to be seen. Uh, but the Red Wings have – this is the only the second game of the three the Red Wings have played against the Hurricanes this season. And the Carolina Hurricanes won the first one one to nothing. And that is about the most Hurricanes score you can ever imagine. Winning one to nothing. A hundred percent. I wonder who was in net for that game. It had to have been. Yeah, it was Vili Huso. 963 save percentage in that game for Vili Huso. Ridiculous. Yeah, we'll take it. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's the Carolina Hurricanes, guys. They're scary in the way that they just don't let you do things. Bunch of jerks. Oh yeah, a bunch of jerks. So any final thoughts? You got anything else? We ball. We do ball. I feel like there's one more thing that I was forgetting to mention. Um, and it'll come to how me. How good you look? How what? How good you look? Yeah, with this massive zit right here. Yeah, I think it's kind of and, cute. and how the lighting right now makes me look like a ghost. I think it's a good look. These are these are. Wait, let's just amp this all the way up. I'm really okay, dude. That's that's kind of scary. This is pure white light. This is the orange light. Actually, that probably should have gone with that. It just doesn't really match the background. Yeah. Um, And this is the light I use, which is about half between white and orange. Ah, turned it off. All right. Enough dilly dallying. We'll be back tomorrow with a game recap. Same time, same place. So your team. Every day. Every day.